Hello everybody, my name is Ian. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today I'm going to talk about this CVJ Shine and I'd like to thank CVJ for giving me the opportunity to share my thoughts and opinions with you guys but rest assured that whatever I say in this video right is my honest opinion. This video is definitely not scripted and CVJ will watch this video together with you guys, okay? Rest assured that. Now, uh, as usual, I will go through the accessories, the specs, the fit and comfort, and of course, my impression of this CVJ Shine. So let's begin the review. Okay, so this CVJ Shine, right? Honestly, when, when I first saw it, I thought, wow, so many diamonds and bling bling. I mean, they are not real diamonds, okay? They are fake diamonds uh, made in Czech. Slovakia, right and uh, it's more suited for for female users lah. I mean I can use it outdoors but you know people will give me that weird look uh, yeah so but when I when I listen to it right it's, it actually sounds pretty decent lah. so not only does it look good it actually sounds pretty decent right so this is uh, retailing for 49 US dollars and if you guys are interested do check out the unaffiliated link in the description below i'm not making a single cent from it okay so this uh, is a single dynamic driver with a 10 millimeter diaphragm in it the impedance of this right is 22 ohms sensitivity is 110 and the frequency response is 20 to 20,000 hertz okay now it comes in a box like this this is a pretty decent box lah, okay nothing much to shout out about it is uh, bigger than some of the kz boxes almost double the size uh, it's got a picture of the iem there at the back it's got the specs and also it shows you a graph uh, of the uh, iem itself i've already graphed my own so maybe later i'll compare this lah. and inside this box right it will come with some paperwork i'm not going to go through that and a drawstring pouch honestly right this is more aesthetics lah, okay you can put your IEM inside and also to organize your IEM your cable so that it does not mix around with your other stuff in your bag so it's brown color brown is not really my favorite color okay uh, comes with some ear tips ear tips are pretty standard as well uh, the inner core is pretty stiff so it's okay uh, not too grippy and then the flange is uh, quite soft lah. it's not it's yeah more to the softer side so i i will be using my own ear tips for this okay then the cable right the cable is terminated with the 3.5 headphone jack it's got a cable organizer velcro and a y spiller is uh, made of plastic and no chin slider and it does come with a mic lah. so this one has a mic with a volume up volume rocker okay and also the play and pause and the ear hooks is a little bit on the stiff side lah, okay so maybe this cable they might want to improve a little bit and make it a little bit more pliable a bit more soft it's a four core cable by the way so pretty standard cable lah. the quality is a braided cable so uh yeah i hope you know they could give a better cable okay then for the iem themselves this is the thing as i mentioned right a lot of diamonds or rhinestones i call them rhinestones uh, on the faceplate and then on the inner shell is a clear shell and it, you can see the, the driver inside it's got some vents here the two pin connectors on the top and the nozzle is a pretty white ball nozzle with metal mesh okay and it's actually made of brass lah, okay so pretty standard type of iem um yeah now let's talk about the fit and comfort i find that this one fits me pretty well uh no complaints on the fit no fin here which is, which is okay uh the iem does jut out a little bit so it's a pretty thick uh iem so it does rest uh, on the inner ear on my inner ear and uh, does not give me any pain or discomfort so pretty comfortable to wear and uh, so the fit is okay uh, and uh, i do maintain my seal comfort wise i find that uh, i can wear this the entire day with no uh, physical fatigue lah. i can uh, i find it very comfortable to wear so pretty standard shape and pretty standard uh, fit and comfort for this right so now let's talk about my sound impression of this iem so for that let me bring up my graph so be right back okay so i am back and as you can see i have graphed out this iem now let's compare this with the official graph that was published on the packaging itself 
uh, is almost the same. It's just that this part here, in terms of the base, is a little bit different, lah. But other than that, it looks almost the same. Okay. So um, for the overall sound performance of this, right? Uh, for fifty dollars, um, I find that it's pretty decent. Okay, and I would say I do recommend for casual listening. Okay, this is for casual listening. But uh, for those critical listening and especially like classical and orchestra listeners and audiophiles who really want the details and the resolution, then I would not recommend this one. For me, I personally. Uh, like listening to this while listening to my techno songs, but I would not pick this up if I were to listen to my classical songs. Okay, jazz maybe for jazz and uh, quartets and those um, more of a uh, vocals like jazz vocals. Uh, then uh, I I will still use this IM. Okay, so that's my overall summary of this IM. So I do recommend for those casual listeners, but uh, clinical and Critical listeners, uh, no, I don't recommend this. Okay, now let's talk about the overall technicalities of this. Uh, the tone and timbre on this, right, is more of a warm, colored, and textured uh, type of tone and timbre. The note weight is heavy, so pretty heavy note weight. I find that um, you know sometimes uh, it doesn't sound too natural. All right, what I listen or hear. Uh, look out for is realism. Of course, uh, is not as I mean nothing is going to be as real as live music. Okay, but uh, what I feel is that this one is okay lah. I mean, it's it's a lot of color, a lot of texture to it, so it's not very real and not very natural lah. Okay, but it's quite okay lah. Not too bad. So for sound stage, I find that the width is pretty wide to the wide to the size, ah, uh, but to the front and back, uh, not much of a distance. Uh, layering also not much of a distance also lah. So I find that uh, sound separation and imaging is pretty average. Uh, I I still can identify where the sound is coming from. For example, the violins are on the right side, the backup singers are on the left side. Those kind of things, but I cannot really pinpoint where they are lah. So it's not a very um, detailed uh, IEM, but it's reasonable. Okay, Res resolution is also quite resolving. In fact, it's a well in terms of resolution, right? What I hear is uh, in terms compared with other IEMs is a pretty resolving IEM. It's just that uh, it's not as clear. As some of the higher end ones that I've tried before, lah. So the clarity is there, but it's quite okay only, right? So that's for the technicalities of this. Now let's talk about the sound stage. Uh, this is a V-shaped tune I am lah. So uh, what I feel is that is more for casual listening. Uh, and there's a lot of bass, a lot of treble, so which means the mids is recessed. And veiled by these two lah. Okay, now the sub bass right is pretty rumbly. The rumble is warm. It's got heavy uh, tone to it, and is soothing to listen to lah. Very textured, got a lot of color to it. Uh, but it's a bit rolled off, so the extension of that treble is not too far, but it's okay lah. Not not a very extended sub bass. Now for the mid bass, right? I, it's also very textured. The punch and the impact, right, is very heavy. Okay, so you can actually feel the presence of that. Uh, so much so that it actually bleeds a little bit. So it's, I'm not saying it's a loose cannon, right? It, the bass does not bleed everywhere, but it it does impede into the the mid range where the instruments are. Okay, so and also some instruments also have that impact, lah. Okay, so if you mix those two together, I find that the mid bass is a little bit overwhelming, lah. Okay, but so I, I hope that this one maybe they can tame down a little bit. Uh, so that's for the mid bass. Now for the mids, where the pianos and the violins and the trumpets and all the instruments are, I find that they are a little bit veiled, lah. Okay, by the mid bass, though they do have that warm and colored tone to it, I feel that they don't. 
sound very natural, but they sound warm and soothing to listen to, and easy to listen to. They're not sharp. They're not too muddled, um, muted. No, I mean it's just that the bass is so overwhelming that you know it does veil the 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 instruments, but it's not that the instruments sound muddled or muted or blunt. They they do still sound clear, right? Don't get me wrong. They sound clear. It's just that the bass is. Bleeding over to the mids, okay. That's for the mids, right? Uh, male vocals, uh, they sound good, right? So male vocals got that um, heavy, authoritative uh, presence in the mix uh, because this overall, as I mentioned, it's got a warm tone to it. So male vocals, they they sound warm and easy to listen to, very soothing and very mellow, okay. For female vocals. There's a bit of brightness here. Okay, so what happens is that for the upper mids, right? If you look at the upper mids, the female vocals do have that presence and that energy, right? Uh, in the mix itself, but they don't sound shouty. All right, it's not to the point whereby it's shouty. So, uh, thank God for that. All right, so female vocals, they have got the energy there. They've got that brightness there. Not so much sparkle, uh, but you know, it's it's bearable, lah. Okay, bearable for me. At the same time, they've got a good warm tone, uh, not so much heavy note weight because some female vocals they really go really high in octave and they they got that brightness and the energy there. And it's quite engaging, right, for female vocals in this I am. Okay, so that's for the female vocals. Uh, treble, uh, as I mentioned, right, treble here it's got good gain, right, not shouty. At the same time, it's not sibilant, right? And in fact, here I find that it's a little bit blunt, right? So if you look at the uh, mid treble here, the dip here, uh, somewhere about the six k region, I find that the treb the simple strikes and the hi hats, they they don't sound too natural. They su they sound a bit blunt, but but I I would say that they they've got good good presence, right? The presence is there. Suddenly, you know, it dips. So if you have that type of experience whereby the initial strike is present and energetic, after that, it actually sounds blunt. Okay, so that type of listening experience, which I hear lah. Okay, so similar strikes, uh, so it, it, they don't sound natural. They they sound energetic, uh, present but not natural. Okay, so that's the what I hear. Okay, uh, but the extension of the treble is not bad. It's good. It's got a natural extension, so you've got that strike of that symbol or the shaker, right? It will sound really long, but in a unnatural way, <laughs> in a blunt way. Okay, so that's that's why I hear lah. Okay, so for treble wise, uh, it's it's a it's a mixed bag for me lah. Okay, I find that it's okay at the same time, uh, it is not too natural. Okay. Right, so that's my overall impression of this CVJ Shine. Uh, again, just to summarize, I find that this uh, for fifty dollars lah is a pretty decent sounding IEM. Okay, it's not for everyone. Definitely, uh, for you know classical and orchestra listeners, uh, they will definitely not appreciate this type of sound. Uh, but for casual listeners, uh, this definitely is a recommendation for me. Right, so that's it for my overall uh, impression and review of this CVJ Shine. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video, and if you did, uh, please give this video a thumbs up, and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, lah. Right, so till next video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day ahead, and I'll see you again in my next video. Cheers.